Smart Alex Show podcast. Smart Alex Show, baby! What do you do now in your live sports marketing role for, for the NBA on ESPN right now? Like day to day and large scale, like what, what are the, the tasks that you, that you do within your role, man? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a role that wears many hats, but, you know, it's wow. essentially putting together the, the, the strategies um, and campaigns um, behind the, the marketing and advertising of the NBA specifically on ESPN. Um, so that branches across everything that we do for, you know, tip off all the games that we have on a weekly basis, um, NBA Saturday primetime, NBA Christmas, um, the NBA playoffs, and then also the NBA finals. Um, and then outside of that, it, it extends to, you know, partnership opportunities that we do um, with external agencies and, and vendors and um, collaborations and stuff that we may do with artists um, or, um, and then also just working internally with, our social team, our production teams, um, and production teams, you know, being like um, the people who run the show, The Jump, or, you know, um, First Take or NBA Countdown. Um, and then also, you know, programming counterparts, um, pretty much everyone you can kind of um, think of across the board that, that touches the NBA in general. Um, and just making sure that, you know, everyone is aligned and aware of the strategy and what we're trying to accomplish from a perspective to, um, get as many people to watch games or be involved in the conversation and become an NBA fan in general um, and really just grow the fandom of the sport, um, specifically on ESPN as much as possible. Man, man, you, you weren't kidding. That's many hats. That's, that's, that's yeah. many hats, man. Um, so when you say, like, making sure that everyone's aligned and aware of the strategy, like, to not only get people to watch games, on ESPN, but like just grow the sport. What does that mean in terms of like actionable, you know, projects or items that y'all actually do? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, so for example, you know, somebody who may not necessarily be a fan of LeBron's, you know, home court activities, but huh. they're super, super huge fan of, you know, um, everything he does with the school that he owns or, you know, um, or some another player in the, the shoes that they wear or something, you know, basically they're a fan of the off court stuff more than they are of the, of the on court accomplishments. Um, so taking those people and converting them into to NBA fans and, you know, enticing them to want to watch games. And the way we do that is um, thinking of innovative ways and partnerships um, to, to reach the fans that aren't interested in, in, in watching a basketball game and reach them um, through the partnerships of, you know, partnering with the likes of a, of a complex and tapping into like, you know, hip hop culture and sneaker culture and fashion culture um, and having a partnership on um, sneaker shopping or something like yeah. that. Um, and that, you know, like, oh, okay, like maybe I'll, I'll watch it. And it, it yeah. says at the end of the episode, like, oh, the Lakers and Rockets play on Saturday. Um, because Blank just shopped on the episode. Two million people saw it. So now if only 100,000 people go watch it that hadn't watched the NBA game before, you helped grow the game. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one aspect of it um, in one way that it, that it can work. Um, but it, it's, it's many ways that you can accomplish that goal. Um, and then it's, it's also, you know, the alignment part comes, comes from just teamwork um, and making sure, you know, everyone agrees kind of like, you know, the common goal of what you're trying to do. So, you know, if you, if you don't see a commercial promoting the game, but you see it run in the jump or you see it be posted on the ESPN social handle, you know, it's about four or five ways you can potentially see that one unified message. So, um, it, it, and it, it, it helps reach as many people as possible, whether it be a younger, younger person who is on Twitter or Instagram or older person who is watching TV all day. Um, but, you know, if it's six different messages out there because we don't have or we're not aligned, um, it makes everyone's job a little tough. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's huge, right? Like having like a centralized theme to, you know, market it on all these different platforms to whatever, you know, target markets you're trying to hit. I think I think that's huge, man. Um, and I, I love like the cultural intersections of it. Like uh, how you said, like, you know, partnering with maybe complex or, you know, just like, you know, people that are big in the sneaker fashion. Like, I feel like, especially the NBA, it's almost unfair, man. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you remember the project I was doing over the summer, but it was basically like all these cultural intersection points, right? Like NBA yeah. could do any of them. Like, 
yep. whether it be music, the business side of things, how a lot of the players are invested in, in the venture capital, like um, just, mm -hmm. just so many different cultural intersection points with music, fashion, it, you know, like the game, the game is like, is part of the culture, right? It's a cultural phenomenon, you know, like these players are, are into other things as well. So I think that's huge. And unfair, it's almost unfair the NBA can like, y'all can tap into so many different markets, whereas like, Maybe MLB or the NFL or others might not be able to because it just, you know, yeah. doesn't make no, that's sense. the beauty of it. I mean, you know, you have players involved in, in hip hop culture, fashion culture, um, pretty much everything, everything you can think of. You know, you have athletes and NBA athletes in movies and TV shows and all this other stuff. So um, it makes it, you know, a little easier to reach as many people as possible because, you know, they may not know who, you know, Russell Westbrook is, but they're like, oh yeah, I saw him in that TV show the other yeah. day. So it's like, um, <laughs> that's, that's where you can connect it. Or they, or they know a player's wife, um, you know, like, yeah. they might not know LeBron, but they know Savannah James. So it's like one of those. Exactly. Things. Or maybe they know, you know, Steph Curry's wife from the cooking exactly. stuff, or maybe, you know what I mean? Or, or Thousand it, it, there's a billion other examples, but I actually had a dude on the podcast the other day. So I haven't put any of this up yet, Trey. Like um, I made the site this past week. And mm -hmm. I've got the RSSS feed and all that good stuff, but I'm I'm about to start uploading it all, like chopping it yes. up and uploading. But the dude I brought on last week, he was telling me how there was a charity game with um, Russell Westbrook, Harden, Travis Scott, a couple other Meek Mill, a couple other dudes in Houston, and Westbrook was like, he was he's so competitive, man, that he was trying to get a triple double in a charity game, bro. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. charity. Yeah. Game. Like he was trying to get a triple double. Like Travis Scott and Meek Mill were trying to like go, you know, one-on-one -on -one against each other, just ISO. I think it was Travis against Meek, and Westbrook came right. out of nowhere for the double. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, he was trying to get yeah, the steal. Yeah. Like, come on, man. But, competitive mentality, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, competitive mentality, man. But, no, nah, that's cool, man. I appreciate the, the insight for all those listening, you know, in terms of, like, what you do with the NBA marketing team. It seems like a very cool role. So has there been any project that you're most proud of in your time with, uh, you know, the NBA on ESPN marketing team? Um, most proud of, um, I mean, I, I'm proud of all of our work, uh, but uh, I would say the one that I'm most proud of uh, for sure was uh, this past summer um, during, you know, um, you know, the different, you know, things where it was like the killings of Breonna Taylor, Maude Aubrey, and, you know, George Floyd, different things like that, of that nature, um, you know, having, being able to uh, produce a spot on the, that, essentially started off with NBA on ESPN, but evolved into essentially the, the ESPN kind of like stance um, of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and then also, um, you know, just the fight for um, racial equality and, you know, social injustice, all those different things. Um, we were able to develop a spot that we called, um, uh, we were able to develop the spot um, that we called um, rise not rise together but um <laughs> more than more than just a game wow. um so oh yeah yeah so uh that was narrated by uh maria taylor um and you know it circulated its uh way throughout the entire company um and you know uh, we were able to sign it off um the same you know espn stands with you know black lives matter and you know the, the fight for all those different um important things um within the culture and society um, at an important point and that's it was it was my favorite and most important just because of um, you know ESPN didn't necessarily have a message that we put out into the world um, but you know the NBA players and the NBA themselves you know that's when, when they were doing a different player protest or players were out in the streets and in rallies and marches and different things like that so um, it gave us a little more flexibility to say like you know we're 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 helping amplify um, the message and tone that the players are, are trying to help everyone else perceive. Um, so that was my favorite project because it was when I got to lead and, you know, as a young black man, um, you know, at ESPN um, in a professional capacity, being able to use the platform that I have now working at, at, a, at a large platform such as ESPN, being able to lead, um, you know, a campaign and creative like that. Um, definitely uh my favorite project so never just a game it was definitely definitely my favorite that's incredible man mad respect to you and, and everyone else that you know put that together 
because y'all had to move that all the way from like ESPN through the Walt Disney Company, right? Like all the way to the top, right? For sure, yeah. So I mean, um, Jimmy Pataro saw it, um, you know, uh, and I'm sure many more. Um, but yeah, it was across the board. Uh, SVPs, um, every SVP, Jimmy, every direct report um, to Jimmy. Um, you know, it was something that he he shared. It was posted to the company's website. Um, we posted it on our social handles. So. Um, Millions. That, that was huge, man. And it, it literally embodied, you know, being more than a game, like all, all of that content. It was, it was for something greater. And, you know, me as, as a fellow minority, I empathize, you know, with, with what was going on. And, and I'm glad that y'all took that stance, you know what I mean, in the midst of, you know, backlash and people saying like, oh, you shouldn't uh, politicize sports and this and that. And that's a whole other topic. But yeah, when I saw that, that was, you know, right when I was like beginning my internship at ESPN. So yeah. it was like late June, early July. So I didn't even know that, you know, I didn't know how things worked yet. So I didn't know that y'all were behind that, but that, that was, that was huge, man. So mad respect to y'all. That was uh, sure. definitely more than a game. And I loved that, uh, you know, when live sports did come back, when the NBA bubble came back, like even Omeka emphasized, like, you know, like we're coming back with a, with a greater purpose than this is just just a game, you know what I mean? It had been such a crazy For year sure. at that point. So, and it only ended up getting crazier as 2020 went along that we were only halfway through, but um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's tremendous, man. Mad respect to you. So what's it like, you know, being in a big company like ESPN, but you know, you're in the greater Walt Disney company. So it's, it's a very massive company, right? So what's it like, you know, being in such a big company and trying to move your projects, you know, through the ranks to make sure they, they get, you know, approved and they get seen and they come to life. What, what's that like? Definitely. I mean, um, I mean, it's, it's quite the process, um, but I mean, you learn it, once you learn it and get the hang of it, it, it kind of, again, it's one of those, you know, fine oil machines and it, it just kind of figures itself out um, and climbs through the ranks. Um, from the ESPN perspective, not everything, you know, reaches the Disney level um, just because sometimes it, it has, it doesn't involve anything Disney related unless we yeah. connect it to a movie launch or, you know, something from a synergy perspective. But um, on the sports side of things, you know, it's, it's just going through our own, you know, review process and approval process of making sure, you know, your team's good with it get it up to a VP and SVP and then sometimes even the president um, himself. But um, it's a, uh, it's one of those things, it, it's communication um, and collaboration is, is the most important parts um, and, and making sure that everyone feels, feels a part of something. Um, it feels like, you know, they, they played their role um, and had a say, in, you know, what, what makes it out the door. Um, so if you kind of check that box um, and, and make make everyone feel good about the work and the final product that gets out there, it makes the makes the approval process um, super easy. Just because you know, if everyone, um, all the if all the soldiers are aligned by the time it makes it to the general, um, you know, there's there's no disputes. And, no doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's no, important, right? I've actually never heard that that phrase. Discussions. Yeah. No. That's yeah. That's huge, exactly. Man. That's huge. So. Basically, usually you're not having to take it all the way to the top. It's just something like that, like with the more than a game, you know, movement and all, all of that. It was just something so big that was like ESPN taking a hard stance on something. So obviously like Disney's brand taking a hard stance on something. So that's like an yeah. anomaly you'd say in terms of the process. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that one was different. And it was just like, you know, you had to make sure that specifically with that one, you know, um, make sure you had the right message out there just because it was a very oh, no. sensitive and emotional very emotional and intention filled um time for you know the the country tell me such a smart alley